All right, we're back with Marissa and Will. We've got a pretty interesting, interesting development here with Elizabeth Warren. Basically, New York Times and The Atlantic both reporting that she is making a lot of inroads with the Democratic establishment. She's basically making a couple of pledges and behind closed doors to Democratic donors in particular, she's making the pitch that she will be the one in order to push progressive change, but with their help. One of the most interesting things I saw from them, Will, was that she was basically pledging not to create an outside organizing for action uh, type organization like Obama did with Obama for America. That really pissed off the DNC because they saw it as basically outsourcing much of the energy of the Obama coalition from the National Party. As somebody who's been involved with this for a long time, do you think that this is going to work? Well, I think that's a good move. I yeah. actually, I do not think as much as I'm an OFA or yeah. I, that was not the best strategy at no. the time. The party yeah, needed no, to be rebuilt yeah. and Obama had the ability to do that. And, and a lot and, of that energy, I mean, his energy behind that campaign was incredible. Yeah, a lot exactly. of it was squandered. Like, I agree. I think it kind of diffused out and mm -hmm. it's still... And the RNC you know. really capitalized on it. I mean, they got the best data operation <laughs> I agree. Uh, that exists I agree. now. But yeah. I mean, I think from a, from a political standpoint with the electorate, is the electorate going to tolerate an Elizabeth Warren progressive candidate cozying up to the Democratic side? Well, you know, look, I think she is very smart in that she has very progressive, bold plans, mm -hmm. and she doesn't walk away from those, but she's able to, unlike Senator Sanders, she's able to not be so angry in delivering those plans, oh, and, I think, and I think that comes across. And, and also, if you think about the history of Elizabeth Warren, mm -hmm. and I remember this, when we were coming on the Obama administration, we were talking about this in the break, we were happy, we won, we were coming in. Elizabeth Warren was leading the charge on consumer regulatory yep. reform. She was a, everyone in the Democratic Party liked that she was doing that, or for the most part, at mm -hmm. that point. And I think she has a long history of standing up for working people, and Democrats want to win. Yeah. <laughs> Democrats want to win. But here's the thing. Um, as Sagar was pointing out, people are angry. There's a lot to <laughs> yeah, be angry they are. about. Yeah, they you are. know, and so to me, I, I look at her base of support, Elizabeth Warren's base of support, and it's mostly, it's the least diverse, it's the most upscale, mm -hmm. grad degree holding, right? And basically, she doesn't offend their sensibilities. And she says, I'm not going to rock the boat she too much. She speaks their language. She's one of them. She does. She's yeah. language. I think it was uh, Naomi Klein said she's identity politics for journalists. Yeah. Because oh, awesome. they see themselves yeah. reflected in her so much. And it's like she's that with than that, affluent. To be clear. Yeah, but that's, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. they aspire to be, right? Yeah, right? I mean, and so it's like that with affluent white liberals. Yeah. And so she, her going to the Democratic Party establishment and them embracing her, I mean, it makes perfect sense to me because she isn't, she's going to work within the system. She's not looking for revolution. Right. She just wants to work within in the existing power structures. And for some people, that's a plus. For others, not so much. Yeah, I mean, I think you do, like, I do respect Elizabeth Warren as a campaigner. Mm -hmm. um, you know, her upset against Scott Brown in Massachusetts, that was the most expensive yeah. uh, Senate race that cycle. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, she does, you know, have a couple of flukes. You know, her claim oh, to, yeah, yeah. Her, her claim to Native, Native Americanism, that was a big, mm -hmm. big mistake. And then having to backtrack on that, people still remember those So things. one thing yeah. I'll say She's here, apologized she very point. much reminds me kind of Ted Cruz. So the establishment hated Ted Cruz, but whenever it was Ted Cruz versus Trump, they're like, all right, Ted, all let's right, go. We're all in. Yeah. And, but the oh, thing that's is, it's interesting this about this is, and this is why I might disagree with you, Will, is ultimately the establishment hated Trump. Even after he was the nominee, they basically wanted to strip him of the nomination. After Access Hollywood, they literally tried to kick him out. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, they bowed. And so if Bernie won the nomination, Tom Perez and all these people, they're going to have to get on their knees and bow because then the, the oh, fate of the party is, is well, hooked. I agree. Right? I think yeah. Democrats are united on one thing. Whoever the nominee is, we're going to get behind yeah. that person. I don't think we're going to see the, the Bernie bros or right. all that happen this time, and I think that's a good thing. But what I'll just, Crystal, you said, I think on Elizabeth Warren, I mean, uh, the wealth tax, that's pretty bold. That's, not, that's, that's kind of a revolutionary no, but, thing. Yeah, but here's the uh, thing. It's not that the ideas aren't bold. It's are you are you really going to do what it takes to get them done? Well, and so when your support comes yeah. from the elites, are you really going to do wealth tax? Are you really going to break up big tech when those are the people that are backing you? Are you really going to go hard after Wall Street? I mean, you know how politics works. Yeah, right. people you know where their bread Obama and butter is. No, no, no. Fair Google question. basically no, owned Obama. I, I but actually she's saying those things, and yeah. I think. You also see a little uptick in black women with her too, mm -hmm. which is you know interesting. Slight though. Uh, Slight. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's, it's yeah. not. A, not, a, it's <laughs> not a, <laughs> again, let her win Iowa. Yeah. In South, I think things change in South. But you Carolina. know, you know what's funny? You bring up Obama, and I actually I, I hear this from a lot of Sanders supporters. They see Warren as a sort of Obama. Says the right things, 
right? Inspires people, crowds, people get excited about her, has this, you know, his first excitement was with the same affluent white liberal crowd, right? Yeah. But when he got into office, it was the same structures. It was bringing in Goldman Sachs. It was, you know, a very similar, it was, it was a continuation, honestly, of the Clinton model. And they worry with her, Marissa, that it's kind of a similar dynamic. Yeah, I mean, I think like we said, Elizabeth Warren is a great campaigner. She does, you know, this great job with identity politics, and she gives you kind of the answers that you're looking for. Is she going to be, you know, the new wave of, of liberalism? I highly doubt it. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, she's she's slowly gaining traction, as is Bernie. Um, you know, my my bet is still on Biden, um, but we've obviously seen him have a ton of hiccups, including this weekend, you know, mistaking uh, New Hampshire for Vermont, which is what absolutely you, What do you think of that Obama comparison? Yeah. You know, I I don't think it's I understand why you would make it. I don't think it's exactly right because again, you're talking about Warren, who was a consumer watchdog, Harvard, you know, Obama coming out. Obama Community Act organizer. No, no, no. I, and look, I love the president. I, I love the president. <laughs> yeah. but what I'm saying is that she she's talking about fighting for the middle class and the unfair tax advantages. She's just doing it in a slightly less angry way. Yeah, and, that's and not I, how it gets and, done. And I get right? well, it depends on yeah. what you do when you get in there. And there's one thing. She's trying to do this middle line, which is hard to do, of yeah. like, I'm reasonable, but I have a view, point of view that's very progressive. Because she's certainly not where Kamala Harris is or Booker or other people are in the ideological they're, spectrum. They're selling out her cups in the Hamptons. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what does that tell you? I mean, I'm well, serious. I, I, I look, what does that I, yeah. tell you about how As comfortable they are? As a I'm sensitive to that because I think <laughs> our goal is to appeal to everybody but stay true to who we are. Yeah, but and I think is, she's trying well, to do that. You can't judge her on what she will do. What has she pushed in the Senate? She's but there's pushed a reason they're so comfortable yeah. with it. And there's a look. True. This, how Might is be she their problem, to, not hers, though. How Maybe. is she going to get this done <laughs> if the only people on the bench to hire worked at Goldman and Treasury? Let's think about it. There's yeah. been a Goldman person in now, an administration that's a big problem. for I the agree. last I agree three administrations. That. It's a bipartisan I agree thing. With you on that. Gary Cohn, Henry Paulson, I, whoever worked for uh, for Obama. Larry Summers. I mean, yeah, yeah. Larry, Larry Summers. I mean, look at this system. If she's beholden to this system, it's never going to happen. Wealth tax. Forget about it. I watched this happen with Trump, which is Trump made all these promises, then he brought in all the guys who he basically the fought against, people. and they're Minutia much better at bureaucracy whatever. than he is. Oh, yeah. And they killed it, and it's gone. And now all we've got is a tax cut for a bunch of corporations instead of immigration reform and any other things that people actually voted for. That's what Elizabeth Warren seems to be telling us if she's telling, I'm going to work with you well, I think and the establishment. It's, it's, you have to be careful about saying, well, hey, all the rich elites are supporting her. That means yeah. she's not going to do anything. You know, and I think that's true. It, yeah, I think that's you have to take her statements. Statement. I think you have to take what she said, what she's done in the Senate, and you have to take her record. I don't think it's fair to just say that. Because she's saying what she wants to do. But Obama's team of plans. rivals saying it didn't work. It was yeah. a total failure. Well, she's but not you know saying what? Yeah. But I think that's the other thing. Piece. Well, I I do look Tech at hates Elizabeth yeah. Warren. I do look at her record <laughs> and now. I look at what she says. Yeah. And you know, she says I'm a capitalist, right? To my bones, I think she says, which is about I'm committed to this system. Her programs that she's laid out, her plans are bold, but they're often means tested. They're not universal. So there is, there are differences sure, here. Sure, and sure, um, sure. and anyway, I so I think there's, well, I think there's a reason why people who have power now are comfortable with Warren. I think so too. Because they so know too. she's not going to rock the boat yeah. too much. She's going to give enough change to keep the pitchforks at bay, which is good. <laughs> right. I will take, right. listen, right. Elizabeth Warren right. is so much better right. than almost anyone else in the field, right? right? right. But that's that's the big difference. Yeah. But and question, the question is, who can actually get something done? You know, I, and having been inside government, uh -huh. you know that the pitchforks are great, but you know, okay, once the revolution happens, what are you going to do? And I think that's sometimes the concern with Bernie. That's a fair too. one. Yeah. And we've, you know. I've talked about it. I've said that exact concern here many times. But we can't solve it today. It's the so. only way uh, real change happens. Uh, so, look, I'm all for it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to you. Organized guys. revolution. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Tomorrow on Rising, we're going to talk to Reverend William Barber of the Poor People's Campaign. He wants Democrats to talk more about poverty. And the former chief economic advisor to Joe Biden, Jared Bernstein, will talk about the odds that there will be a recession. And Team Rising is going to be here as always. Make sure you hit subscribe, and we're going right. to see you guys tomorrow. Click the bell. Have a great day, guys.